just wrote down a list of things that I've got to do today. Tomorrow I'm going to have a nice relaxing day by myself and I'll go to the beach. I did this at the start of this year. I didn't film it, that's one. But I, since then I've been dreaming of doing that again. So I'm going to go have a really nice day by myself. <laughs> and I'll film and vlog it and take you guys along as well. Okay, we've got to start by cleaning my room because it is a mess. It's been so long, you've been so tough, you kept it up. Been standing tall, keeping strong, and I'm doing well. I'm eating more, and oh, you might think that you're fine. You need someone. And oh. I'm gonna clean the bathroom now, and then vacuum all the floors but most of the things are packed away cleaned all the surfaces should be all right and you've been It's really loud the background noise but I'm going to do some summer camp planning stuff uh, what else do I do? reflect on this year and then plan for next year I do have less than an hour though so I gotta hurry and then I gotta get ready for work and that's kind of all I can do today but that's all right we have basically almost all of tomorrow to do some other stuff too page that has this year's milestones so more so like things that have happened because so much has happened this year and it's it's crazy 
but also it's taught me a lot. Beside it, I have a column for what God has taught me and mostly that's going to be related to the things that have happened this year. Um, and then answered prayers as well as what I'm thankful for and also what I'm praying for. So I'll probably turn that into a prayer. Okay, I'm back. I'm ready for work. Um, but I just wanted to just kind of talk through some things. Um, so I did all, I just filled up all the stuff that I wrote down. Honestly, I would 100% recommend you do this before the end of the year or just whenever actually. But at the end of this year, like doing this has been so helpful because I didn't really realize how God has had, has had his hand around every single thing. And the more I just carry through life without actually looking back, I forget to actually praise him for the things that he's done. Through all the joys and the pains of this year, I know that and I can see how he's been using that um, and using me for a good purpose. Um, and that's just so encouraging to me to be able to go back and look through them, give thanks to God, and then I can ask him that he would continue to sustain me and wrap his hands around me and use me for his glory and his will um, for next year to come. But a lot's happened this year. Went through my first heartbreak. I started uni, finished up my first year of uni, got my P's so I can drive by myself. I struggled a lot with my mental health this year as well. Um, I got baptized. I feel so much more confident at work. I feel like I've learned so much from work this year. Um, I have, I'm, I'm dating someone who is literally the sweetest boy ever. <laughs> um, and I prayed for him for this whole year. And God has just answered prayers in so many different ways. And for my youth girls as well, like all of these things, I've just been like, wow. And God has taught me so, so much about sinfulness and how we are sinful, how sinful I am, but how faithful and merciful he is. He's also taught me how much I desire to run away from him, but no matter how much I desire to turn away from him, he desires to turn to me and run towards me. Um, what else? He's taught me how good his will is above mine and all, and how powerful his word is more than I could ever think and know and how Jesus fully cleanses us from actually everything and to understand how his payment truly, truly wipes away all our blemishes and makes, G makes God look at us as he looks at Jesus no matter how many times we fail and how, how much shame the devil tries to put on us to turn us away from, from God actually to realize how freeing the forgiveness we genuinely have is, is just, it's so unmatched. It's just crazy and amazing. And that's something I've just been dwelling on a lot. Um, I'll probably dive into that maybe some other time, but these are sort of like a broad overview of the things that have happened this year. Um, but tomorrow, hopefully the weather holds out and i'm gonna head to the beach uh i'll film tomorrow as well and then i'll just have a day where i can just spend by myself bye it is the next day and as you can tell i am not at the beach it is quite cloudy and cold so i figured if anything i'll just stay at home and do the rest of the stuff that i was gonna do and it's still self-care because i'm still Still just a chilling. Okay, so I just did my quiet time and I thought I would just share some things that encouraged me. Um, so I'm going through two Timothy because our youth camp's gonna go through that soon. Um, so I thought it'd be nice to go through this and um, I've honestly just been struggling so much with desiring to pick up God's word. Um, and I've been praying for that and I've asked a lot of people to pray with me for that. And the past two days, God has just given me a desire to. I was struggling so much that I was like, if I want to, it's not I want to want to because then I will never ever do it. No, it's I want to, so I'm going to. I'm trying to set like a habit of getting up doing some like basic toiletry stuff 
um, and drinking some water and then coming straight to the Bible and then doing other things as well. Sometimes it mixes up here and there, but that's kind of like the gist of it to kind of create a habit where it'll be second nature for me to come into God's word. Anyways, so 2 Timothy. These two verses I was dwelling on from chapter 2. So these few verses. So chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. This is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. And then the other one is verse 19 in chapter 2. Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his, and everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. And I just thought those two verses were really encouraging. The suffering that Paul endured, he said that it's worth it because God's word never changed, even if he is. And so therefore, no matter what he goes through, he knows that God's word will keep going. It's so powerful. It works despite him. And therefore, he will endure everything he goes through. And I thought it was really encouraging to hear the way that Paul says, this is my gospel. I never really, I'm challenged by that because I never really think about how it's true. The gospel of Jesus Christ is so personal. I'm challenged by it because do I think of the gospel as something that is so personal to me? Then it kind of ties into verse 19 where he talks about how the Lord knows those who are his. Um, and it reminds me of um, one of the parables in John about the sheep and how the shepherd knows his sheep and this is why the gospel is personal. Like the gospel is the person of Jesus Christ and it is personal and he is personal because he knows us. Thank you so much for watching this year. She was born.